Um, I'll pick up on the, the Quran issue, but before I do that, first I'd like to say that every single panel member on here, uh, I know there was some controversy before about what this event was supposed to be about, but it's my pleasure and my honor to be seated here with every single one of them. And Jazakallah khair for coming. Um, the issue of the Quran is important. It's really important. You need to attach it to your heart. But I want to just give you one scenario. What if you didn't have a Quran? What if you're in a place that you were held and that the Quran was abused and des desecrated in front of you, it was ripped into pieces and thrown into the toilet because they knew it would break your heart. What would you do then? What would you do if that every time they came into your cell and they took you away and you left, the Quran was left and you came back and found boot prints on it or written inside it were swear words, what would you do? Would you say to them that this Quran that is my only solace in this place, I give it back to you? because I don't want you to use me as an excuse to desecrate it, because that's what we did. In Guantanamo, that's what we did. We said, if this is what you're going to do, take the Quran. We don't need it. Because we're going to teach the Quran and learn the Quran the way of Muhammad wasallam and Nabi al-Ummi, the unlettered prophet, who taught from word of mouth to his Sahaba. So much so to the point that the Quran, in fact, was only put into a book because its great memorizers were all being running, defending the meaning of Islam against the, the false prophets and were being killed. And that's why they put it into a book. And just one more thing, I think, to finish on this is sometimes people get lazy on the issue of the salah and the prayer. And they think, well, you know, I'll just leave it. We all do it. I, I myself am guilty of this. But I just want to tell you one incident that still even relating this makes my hairs on my, end, on my back stand up. We were held, I was taken into US military custody and taken onto a C-130 transport plane. There were flashes of cameras, American soldiers were punching and kicking us, we had bags over our heads and we were shackled with our hands behind our backs. Onto the airplane we were seated and straps put across our legs and our legs were also shackled. At this point, and all the roar of the engines and the scream of the soldiers cursing us in every new Arabic word that they'd learnt, there was a sound to the left of me. He said, Akhi, salam alaikum. I said, Wa alaikum as salam. He said, Akhi, hal sallayta salat al maghrib? Adunnu salat al maghrib dakhal. He said, Have you prayed salat al maghrib? Because I think the salat, the salat time has come. And I have to tell you, at this time, I had forgotten about the Salah. The last thing in my mind was Salah. I, the thing in my mind was, am I going to live or am I going to die? But there was this angel in human form sent right next to me to remind me, inna salata ka al kitab that prayer time has been fixed at its specific times. And so in this way, with my hands behind my back and my legs forward and my head hooded and guns and knives pointed at our necks, this brother began, Allahu Akbar. So you see, people ask this question, did the Americans ever let you pray? And I laugh and say they could never have stopped us.